Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on 46 with another autocross car build. My vehicle today is the Camaro Z28. Now this car does start off as a mid-A class car, so I don't have very much PI to play around with at all. However, that didn't stop the 911 GT3 from going very quickly, so this could be a pretty damn good car. After all, the basic car, I love the Z28, is a fantastically good car to drive. So I'm hoping it'll make for a good autocross vehicle. Quite what I'm gonna do, kind of, PI-wise, I'm not I'm not 100 sure yet. Uh, oh bugger! The rear wing raises the PI. God damn it! I was hoping to to <laughs> lose some. The car has 500 horsepower to start with, which is relatively decent, but it is very heavy. 3,800 pounds. That is a lot of weight in here. Now I do ideally want tire widths. 355 tires are lovely uh, on this. So I think we're going to put these on and then go for front tire widths as well. Three two fives on the front. That is ginormous tyres for <laughs> for this, which is great. Uh, tyre compound wise, I don't... Oh, we could get race tyre compound on and keep it in A-class. Let's see what we can do about the weight. I think the weight is going to be the bigger issue in all of this. I want to get the weight out of the car. Now, I can't get full weight... Even with full weight reduction, in fact, it's not going to be that light. It's still going to be one of the heavier vehicles here. Um, even if we took the... We'd have to take both the tyre widths off. Mm. Okay, I think we I think we really have a huge amount of choices. We're going to have to go for sport weight reduction. We're going to have to go... We'll get some of uh, the race suspension on the car. Basically, that's you know, come with a relatively large amount of race parts all, already on it. Uh, now, do we go... Let's try and get the exhaust on. Ah, good, we can. That doesn't really save a huge amount of weight, mind. I don't suspect any of these really are going to, are they? They're going to save little bits of weight, but it's not going to be a huge amount. Right, we're going to have to go with... A race exhaust. Can we maybe possibly? No. <laughs> Any more of these? No, that one's not going to work. Maybe slightly. No, that's one PI too much. Oh, that's one. God damn it, game. <laughs> yeah, all going to be. Oh, there we go. We could. We could go for that. That's another. Was it eight horsepower onto it? Or we could. Oh, bloody hell, it's one. One too much. Yeah, okay. We're going to have to go for that then. One. Um. Uh, not one PI over, sorry. Uh, good, good PI number. We've got uh, 533 horsepower now. 507 foot pounds of torque. We are just under 3,600 pounds. That's a lot of weight, though. I'm guessing. Oh, we can sneak on a flywheel. Right, let's have a look. If we, okay, we're gonna want to put a diff on anyway. Doesn't affect the PI, so that's going in there. Can we get? Aha! Uh -huh, so we can get one bit of driveline upgrade. I'm guessing things like, uh, yeah, sometimes we have seen a couple of gearboxes that have lowered PI, so it's always worth a check, but that's not the case here. Okay, we have the choice of driveline. I think driveline's only two and a half pounds, or flywheel that's two-ish pounds. Uh, we'll go flywheel on this one for a change. Right. Okay. That is... Camaro built, relatively quick, easy build. Don't have to put that many parts on the car. We do not have race tyres on the vehicle. We do not have full weight reduction. Quite a bit more compromised than the Porsche in many ways. We do have some gloriously large tyres on here. And while we don't have race tyres, we do have essentially sport tyres on the car, which is not bad at all, uh, really, con considering everything. I think it might still be a bit too heavy, but there is only one way to find out. And of course, that means taking the Camaro to the Hockenheim circuit, where it will get three laps to try and go as fast as possible. Our current leader, the Renault 5 Turbo, has a lap time of 205.2. How this Chevy is going to do, I have absolutely no idea. I didn't expect the 911 GT3 to go particularly fast, and it did. It's in second. Uh, I don't think this is going to be as quick as the Porsche. But I could be completely and utterly wrong. I think this may be too heavy. I mean, the Porsche was relatively light. It's probably a thousand pounds lighter than this. <laughs> By the time I was finished with it, we do have lovely huge tyres on this and quite a bit of power. I, I have absolutely no clue. I have no clue what the Camaro is going, going to do. I hope it's good, because I do like the Z28. Uh, <laughs> fingers crossed, eh? We can maybe, possibly get it around the course quickly. How do we fare through these first gates? It's pretty nice, actually. It gets to change direction pretty well. The brakes are good. That is uh, always nice to know. I don't think it was going particularly fast, though. All right, how do we do acceleration-wise? D 
down here. Yeah, it's it's certainly certainly not doing badly. Oh, it's so lovely and planted through there. <laughs> <laughs> from the last vehicles that are gone that have been wiggly and moving around and then we have this that is just absolutely stuck to the road this car it is just not <laughs> okay there we go <laughs> I got it a little sideways I lied we can get it a little bit sideways uh, it is so lovely and lovely and planted it doesn't feel like it is as heavy as it is it is really a very very heavy car for this uh, acceleration is only 116 miles an hour which is not the fastest down this part of the course. Ah, oh, I got carried away with understeer a uh, little bit. That's a, that's a slight shame. Oh, and I've not quite got that. Okay, I've buggered up that turn there completely. Yeah, this does not feel like it's, what is it, three and a half thousand pounds. It does not feel that, that heavy around here. There certainly is, oh no, okay, that's not, we're going to be, oh no, we're going to have to be really careful coming into that corner because we, we can't get the front end to change direction as well as we can in some of the very little cars. And let's face it, even if it was nice, it's still a huge frame of a car. These brakes are so good though. <laughs> it is a big heavy car, but it really does get stopped so very, very well. Okay, up towards the hairpin now. Uh, we have to go, I have to be a little bit careful. Uh, probably gonna want second <laughs> around there as we wait to get on the power We could probably we might actually be able to be flat out up there It's nice across the uh, transition of cambers and the bumps around there. That's caught out many a car We can just slide the rear end a little bit in second gear, but it's not too bad at all Right, and then the final oh no the final stupid mistake from me right that's that's I think that's my mistakes out of the way Yeah couple of clipped, in fact, quite a few clipped barrels in, in all of that one. About four or five, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with how well this car drives, but uh, yeah, need to stay away from the barrels. So, on to the second run for the Camaro. The brakes are mighty impressive. The handling is pretty good if I don't drive it like a moron with uh, <laughs> the little bits of understeer uh, going on. I... Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased to inform you that the Camaro is actually really quite good. Really quite good at, uh, at this. Oh, slow it down through there. I wonder how much speed we can take through this first. This, this bit here is a terrifying, is a terrifying gate. It's caught out many a car, but it is so quick. It's such a nice car to uh, drive through that section. I have to say, of all of the vehicles that I've driven, especially at that's about 108 miles an hour, especially at those kind of speeds, I don't think I have driven a car that I have been more confident with coming to that part of the course. You, the Camaro is just stuck to the road through there. Some of the, the low speed acceleration, or sort of second gear acceleration, it could have a little bit of a problem, but down there, it is planted on the road, it is not letting go. At 116, 117 miles an hour down there is good, not the most amazing, but as I said, you know, it's only a few miles an hour down on much lighter cars, and some of those much lighter cars have had as much power as the Camaro. So, yeah, this thing, it puts its power down very, very well. Now, this is where we are going to struggle, I think. Oh, it's not bad through... Ah, oh, I think I caught the splitter on the gate there. That's annoying. Um, it's not bad through there at all, but you, uh, yeah, you kind of notice the size of the car. It's not so much the weight of the car, because as I said in the first run, it really doesn't feel like it's one of the heaviest cars to go around here. It does feel very, very agile, which is a remarkable thing for <laughs> for this, but it is a big car. And, uh, oh, I think we've done it. Oh, no, we did actually clip that one a little bit harder. Uh, it's just clipping the, the nose, the, just the corner of the splitter. I actually got one of the gates with the rear of the car as well going through there. But uh, since the front was already through, it didn't uh, give me a penalty. Uh, yeah, it's, it is a bit bigger car than some of the other ones that, uh, that we have had. And when it really comes down to it through sort of here, this is where the Renault 5 was so mighty fast. The Camaro is not quite as quick. Change of direction. It's not bad, though. It's not bad. Two gates clipped, 10 second time penalty for the Camaro uh, on, on that run. It's... I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. On to the final run for the Z28. If I can keep that front splitter out of the barrels, I will be, I will be happy. And I suspect we can probably get a pretty decent time for this car. You know, bearing in mind that it is what, one and a half, two thousand pounds heavier than a lot of the vehicles that have gone quickly 
through here, and that is a lot of extra weight to be uh, taking through what is a very tight and very twisty course. It's a thousand pounds heavier than the 911. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, a lot. A lot in terms of, uh, of autocross, and the Camaro is so very planted throughout these gates. You can carry a lot of speed and it's, you know, perfectly happy to do that. We've had a lot of cars have issues through that first gate with wanting to slide and just generally being awkward. And that is really not the case with with this Chevy. You can take a lot of speed and it's absolutely fine with it. And equally, perhaps even more impressively, is how good the brakes are on this car. Again, considering just how incredibly heavy this is, you can go really quite late on the brakes and get the car stopped very, very controllably. This is one of the vehicles that uh, I really trust this car, much, much like the NSX in many ways. The NSX was not a hard car to drive quickly, that one. You really trust the vehicle. And in this, it's a very similar thing. I, I trust that I can dive very late under braking, and that's not a thing I've necessarily had with some of the uh, more recent vehicles. The Fiat Dino was pretty good, but even that was not. You know, I think this is better under braking than the Fiat, and the Fiat was so so much lighter than this car. I think we're perhaps being helped again by those ginormous front tyres and just impressive brakes in this car. There are a couple of places though that it does feel like a big heavy muscle car and uh, anywhere that's kind of third or second gear that is where we start to um, start encountering problems really. It does feel oh, <laughs> you're just trying to get it around these last couple of corners. This is where the Renault 5 was so mighty fast, and this is where the Camaro is not bad at all, do not get me wrong. It is not bad at all through here, all things considered, but it's not as good as the Renault 5. It's a run towards the line. Oh, it's quick. It's very quick. A 207-1. That's... Uh, <laughs> that, is, uh, that is a good time. That is a really very, very good time. From the uh, from the Camaro, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was going to be quick. Perhaps not quite that fast. I am um, I'm thoroughly impressed with with the Z28. It's such a huge amount of weight for for an autocross car, and it does really well. It's such a composed car, such a nice car to drive. There are a couple of times where it will spin up the rear wheels, and you might have to be a little bit careful with it as yeah it can I mean, there's quite a lot of power and quite a lot of torque in in this and even with the giant tires yeah it can still spin the wheels up slightly but that's still really rather good going they still I mean the time puts it in to 14th place it beats the R32 skyline it is a fraction behind a Ferrari 355. The Jeep Grand Wagoneer is ahead of it. I believe the Grand Wagoneer was considerably lighter, as silly as that is. I believe that was uh, relatively not too bad for for what it is. I, yeah, I've I, I've said this Camaro is a great car before, and it is, it is a really, a really impressive vehicle around here. It doesn't at all drive how you expect it would. It changes direction very well. A couple of times, certainly the run towards the line at the end, you do feel that it is... Uh, not the lightweight sports car that a lot of the vehicles that have gone quickly here are, but it's that's certainly not a bad time to do a 2071 here. Is very, very good going from the Camaro. So, yeah, there we go. Not a bad choice for an autocross car, this one. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.